In our last video, we talked about uncertainties. Uncertainties are how we express the limitations of our measuring tools and the materials we're working with when we report a measurement. Today, what we're going to look at is calculating using these uncertainties with the understanding that anytime we use a number that's based on a measurement to do math, the result of our math has to reflect any inaccuracy or uncertainty that happened to show up in the initial measurement. We can't do math and suddenly make our measurement absolute and perfect. So we're going to see how we treat these numbers. There are a couple key items to keep in mind as we start this. The first is that we're only going to report uncertainties to one significant figure. If I'm reporting 4.45 plus or minus 0 0.0025 grams, I might as well just go ahead and round that to plus or minus 0 0.003 grams. Just by standard, it seems to be uh, good enough to express that much uh, accuracy or that many significant figures. Also, if I have a measurement that has accuracy, say, to the thousandth place, but my uncertainty reflects plus or minus 0.1, the tenth place, probably I'm not going to need the hundredth and thousandth place in my final measurement. I'm okay with changing that. I'm going to edit the calculation to reflect that uncertainty. So we'll keep those in mind as we go through this. To start with, we're going to show how we add or subtract values that have uncertainties. How is it I go about making a uh, mathematical calculation using an uncertainty and keeping track of my significant figures? So to do this, we'll need a sample problem. I'm going to start with a volume of water, 2.5 plus or minus 0 0.05 cubic centimeters of water. Now I'm going to add that volume of water to another volume of water. This measured value is 5.0 plus or minus 0 0.05 cubic centimeters of water. Both of these probably having been measured in a graduated cylinder. I want to add these two values. To add them, I'm going to treat first the normal numbers. Normal being just the ones that haven't been messed with in any sort of uh, uncertainty way. And I'll add them normally. You get 7.5, and that's beautiful. My significant figures are fine. There's nothing to worry about there. And then I will also add my uncertainties. I still keep the plus or minus. But 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 add up to be 0.1 centimeter cubed. You notice I didn't write 0 0.10 because that would be two significant figures. I only want one significant figure. But this is how I'm going to go about adding values. It, the same thing is true if I subtract measurements. I'm going to treat it the same way. So let's see how that works. When we're subtracting measurements, we're still going to add our uncertainty. The idea being that even though our number values may get smaller, the overall amount of uncertainty increases when we put those two numbers together. So we're going to add uncertainties, even if we're subtracting other numbers. So here's an example. Let's say I've got a mass of filter paper at the end of my lab, 5.23, make that a good decimal so that we're all happy with it, whoa, and plus or minus point. 0, 0.005 grams is the measurement that I managed to get out of our digital balance. So that's a nice measurement to finish a lab with. It looks all pretty. Now I measured the initial mass of that piece of filter paper as 4.22 plus or minus 0, 0, 0.005 grams at the start of my experiment. In other words, my filter paper has gained weight. This makes sense because it's filtered some sort of material out, hopefully. That's why we use it. Now, to figure out how much material is on that filter paper, all I have to do is subtract these values. I have my starting value and my ending value. Set up my little math problem. Da, da, da. I'll plug it into a calculator. I deal with the normal parts of the number first. One, zero, one. That's beautiful. I just subtract it as normal. However, my uncertainties aren't subtracting from each other. If I did that, I would be saying that I had no uncertainty at all. That's ridiculous. I can't take two measurements that are uncertain, plug them into a calculator, and suddenly eliminate the reality from it. What I need to do is make sure that my reality is reflected. I'm taking an uncertainty, and I'm applying another uncertainty to it. Those are additive. 
So my uncertainty in this case becomes 0 0.01. And then I'll label my unit. 1.01, .01, give or take 0 0.01 grams, becomes a very reasonable uncertainty to work with here. So that's how we handle adding and subtracting uncertainties. Next we're going to look at multiplying and dividing. When we multiply or divide measurements, we add uncertain blah 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 blah. Let's try that again. When we multiply or divide measurements, we add percent uncertainties. When we when we've had our measurements before, we we're dealing with absolute uncertainties. We are absolutely 0.1 gram above or below, give or take, in that range. In order for us to multiply and divide, we need to create percent uncertainties. Those don't come from measuring. We have to calculate those percents to work with. So let's give that a try. For this stage, I've picked a density calculation to work with. It's a simple formula that involves division of a mass divided by a volume. So we can calculate the density of a sample using density equals mass over volume. And I've picked some starting measurements to work with that are pretty typical of what we might come up with in a lab, except the numbers are really pretty looking. We have a starting mass of 25.00 plus or minus 0 0.005 grams, as we might get off of our digital balance, and a volume measurement of 10.0 plus or minus 0 0.01 cubic centimeter, as we might get from a graduated cylinder. And I'd like to be able to apply those to our math problem. To begin with, I'm going to need to convert my 0 0.005 gram absolute uncertainty to a percentage. In order to do that, I'll treat it as a percent problem. 0 0.005 grams divided by 25.00 grams times 100. That's a percent problem. And what we get out of that is 0.02% uncertainty. Likewise, I'm going to do the same thing for my volume measurement. 0 0.01 centimeter cubed divided by my starting amount, my normal value, 10.0 centimeters cubed. Sorry about that extra button pop up there. Centimeters cubed times 100. Typical percent problem at this point. And that gives me a 0.1% uncertainty. So now I can reflect the numbers that I'm working with. Instead of with absolutes, I can present them with percentages. You'll notice I'm reflecting my measurements here as percentages. Just change that. And now we'll be able to add them when we're doing our math. Let me set this up for you. Density is mass divided by volume. My density, then, can be calculated as 25.00 grams divided by 10.0 cubic centimeters. And we handle the normal numbers without their uncertainties, just as we would handle any other little problem in our calculator. We get 2.50 grams per cubic centimeter. And we'll clean that up later because we know IB doesn't like that format. So 2.50 grams per cubic centimeter. For the uncertainties, we add them. I'm going to add 0.02 and 0.1 as percentages. So that my uncertainty percentage here is 0.12%, give or take, or plus or minus. So I could report an answer right now of 2.50 grams centimeters to the negative third, give or take, plus or minus 0.12%. But we typically won't leave it like this. There are two problems. One, I've got too many significant figures here. And two, I've got a percent. And that's not really practical for us to use in the lab. So the next step is going to be converting that percent back into an absolute measurement. And we'll do that by taking a, a typical percent problem, find out what 0.12% of 2.50 grams per cubic centimeter happens to be. So let's make that happen. I've got 0.12% of 
my amount 2.50 grams. And if I want to take 0.12% of this, I'm going to set up a multiplication problem. Point, oh, little cursor. Point zero zero one two times 2.50 grams. And we'll calculate that amount to get our absolute measurement. Thanks to a handy dandy calculator, we can figure out that this is 0 0.003 grams. And now I'll be able to reflect my answer with an absolute measurement of 2.50 grams plus or minus 0 0.003 grams. Not too shabby. We're back to an absolute. We've only got one sig fig. We've got a mathematically valid answer that reflects the uncertainty. I know it's a lot of work dealing with the percentages in there, but it's worth the effort to be as accurate as humanly possible. One last little tidbit to talk about. So where do we put the unit label? You've seen me put it in a couple different places. Now, the truth is there's still a little bit, bit of debate about where the right spot should be. Typically what I've, what I've run across and what I prefer to do is if I've got a measurement of grams or cubic centimeters or something along those lines, an absolute measurement, I'm going to save that absolute measurement value for the end, the unit here being grams after all of it. Because it rolls off the tongue very well if I'm speaking this aloud, 2.50 plus or minus 0 0.003 grams. If I have both a unit label and a percentage, I typically will put the unit label with the first value and the percentage after the uncertainty. So 25.00 grams plus or minus 0.02%. Typically this is where I will put it. There is a little bit of debate out there, and other IB teachers and other professors will uh, prefer it done one way or the other, but we still have a little bit of gray area open. If I find out more, you better believe I'll spew it at you in one of these videos.